What is up guys, William here from fitnessforbackpain.com. I'm really excited to talk about today's topic because it's super common. You're trying everything you can, you're doing all the things, you're working out, you're, you're, you're not stretching as much anymore, you stop seeing your chiropractor, but your low back pain is not going away. So today we're gonna to talk about why, three things specifically of why your low back pain is not going away and what you should be focusing on. These three things have nothing to do with stretching. They have nothing to do with exercising more. They have nothing to do with your special and your case needs more help. It's things that you can apply, super simple. You can literally start today. You can pick one of the three, and I promise you, if you find out that you have not been following these guidelines, you're gonna find the solution to why your low back pain isn't going away. As always, guys, if this is your first time here, make sure you smash, everyone says smash, destroy, annihilate the like button because you know what? There is a YouTube algorithm. And if you're brand spanking new here and you want to know, well, well, what should I do from here? Where should I go? I have a free back pain workshop. It covers all things exercise to reduce sensitivity, to reduce pain, to learn how to exercise if you are in pain, all right, go to fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash back pain workshop. It'll be linked in the description box as well as popping up right there under the video. Check it out, it's completely free, it's yours. Go get it. So the first reason potentially why your low back pain is not going away is gonna be given to you in the form of a question. Do you understand your personal pain triggers? And if so, if you do understand what these are, what are you doing to eliminate the triggers to bring a desensitization effect to your sensitivity? Now, I'll break this down. We all have pain triggers. Everyone's situation is different. That's why people try to, or providers, doctors, physios, and chiropractors, and physical therapists, they are taught to overcomplicate things because there is so many variables when it comes to low back pain that you are trained as a, you know, a practitioner to understand all the variables and all of them have to be addressed. But when you try to simplify it, if you can make it more clear for people, it comes down to, okay, what do you do now that causes irritation, that causes a spasm or, or a catch or a flick or whatever you wanna call your specific pain experience? Find out what those triggers are. It could be all things bending, it could be all things extending it could be all things twisting or reaching or holding weight out in front away from my body there's a lot of different triggers that you might have the best way to understand what your triggers are are take a sheet of paper and a pen and just write them down i'm not asking you to obsess over your pain triggers but understand what they are so in your mind you're like you know what I clean every day, I do X, Y, and Z. And every time I do X, Y, and Z, when I do this, this catches, when I do this, this catches, when I bend or twist or lift like this, this catches. Okay, well let's look at rewiring or rethinking or, re or finding a new way to approach these specific pain triggers. Because when you are being triggered, when your pain and symptoms are being triggered, your sensitivity is increasing. We need to desensitize your low back. Only way to do that is the best that we can at first understand these pain triggers and reduce them. The second reason why your low back pain might not be going away is because you're being too cautious. That makes zero sense. If I have low back pain, why in the world would I go hard all the time? Because I'm not asking you to go hard all the time. What I'm asking you to do is stop protecting yourself all the time, okay? There's a difference between anxiety, fear, catastrophizing stress and being like, you know what? I'm just safer like this. I'm safer not doing anything, not moving. I'll do my little three minute walk on my treadmill. But after that, I get like a, a two out of 10 pain and I gotta stop because I'm gonna wreck myself. That's a very terrible way of thinking. And if that's what you think, I encourage you to start to work on reframing your idea or your perception of pain. The whole point to using movement, using strength, and strategies to desensitize your pain system is to over time build resilience in the body. The things that you do now that cause pain, you will do them later down the road without pain, okay? If you think about, if you, if you take the reduction 
mindset to back pain, if I just remove all the things that cause pain or I remove all, this, all the sensitive things that I do forever, then my life will be good and I won't have to worry about anything. That's a terrible way of thinking. What you want to do is find entry points into all these activities. If it's exercise, if it's walking, if it's hiking, if it's kayaking, low level, safe, non-destructive ways to approach these things on the level that you are. So a good scale of pain that I try to use with all of my clients is a four out of 10. Whether you wait until you are 100% pain free versus whether you say, okay, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm jogging or I'm, I'm doing some lunges and I kind of feel some tension, my low back kind of hurts. It's a three out of 10, maybe four out of 10. You're good. It doesn't mean you're causing damage. Your body is giving you feedback. It might be out of fear, it might be out of stress, it might be out of anxiety of you now, you're pushing the limits of your body and you're challenging yourself. You've got to do that because if you want to build resilience in the body, you've got to challenge these tissues to get stronger. Listen, doing a 10 minute walk every single day for seven years straight is not making you stronger. It's not making you stronger. You have to progress. You have to build up. You have to add resistance in order to get stronger. So yes, you've been walking for five minutes a day for seven years, but you're still in pain, you've got to continue to build resilience, continue to up the ante, I guess you can say. So don't be afraid to push the limits. Don't be afraid to experience some feedback, some negative feedback in the form of soreness or tension or tightness or a little bit of pain, as long as you're using that scale as a rule of thumb. Again, four out of 10 pain, if you're there, hang out. You're safe still, nothing's wrong with that. You start getting into the five, the six, the seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, obviously that's, a, that's an extreme amount of pain. You don't wanna go that far. And the last point to that is you want to challenge these fears. The whole point of allowing yourself to experience these, this level of pain while you exercise or while you move or do your activity that you love doing, it doesn't have to be exercise, it could be just folding laundry. If you allow yourself to experience some of this feedback in a controlled setting, four out of 10, you're controlling the pain scale, is you're challenging these fears. And if you can challenge the fears, challenge the anxiety and the worry around experiencing that feedback, and you're like, dude, you know what? Like, I'm good. Like, yeah, like, I got a little bit of tension, but like, tomorrow I'm gonna be okay. And tomorrow comes and guess what? You're okay. You had some feedback, but you allowing yourself to experience it and challenge those fears and being consistent with that is gonna build up that resilience in the mind, which is so important when it comes to the rest of the body. The last and third point, if you're still here, I appreciate you. Don't forget to like, okay, smash it, annihilate it. Like the video, share it with your friends. If you got someone who is in pain, they need to hear this. But point number three is make sure you understand your personal threshold. Now it sounds a little bit like point number two when it comes to challenging the pain, kind of understanding, you know, what's good pain and what's bad pain. But the third point is something that I see very, very often when it comes to people who have persistent pain. And in my Relief Academy course, which right now it is closed, you can sign up to get on the waiting list for the enrollment. It's not open right now, but you can get on the waiting list. I'll link to the course in the description box below. You can check that out for future enrollment dates. But in that course, I talk about, or I, there's a video in there where I break down the life cycle of pain, right? The pain cycle that we, that most chronic persistent low back pains go on, and that is like this, up and down and up and down, where it's good days and bad days, good days and bad days, good days, good days, good days and bad days for a week. That's the cycle of overcoming chronic pain. What your goal is with activity is normally, as these, you know, hills and valleys, ups and downs, whatever you wanna call, your activity typically goes like this. Here's your activity, here's your pain cycle. As you feel better, your activity increases, you do so much stuff, and then, oh crap, I'm in pain, I, I gotta stop, I'm gonna lay around, let's ice pack it. Let's get the ice packs and heating pads, let's break them out. And the pain comes back up, and you, oh, or the pain goes away, you feel better, and like, oh snap, it's time to like, you know, repaint the whole house and lay tile all day. Oh, I, I'm destroyed for the next two weeks. Like that's, that's the life cycle of pain. We have to break that habit. You find your threshold, which means I can do about this much and have a four out of 10 pain and be good. So what that looks like on paper, here's your pain cycle, which is natural. Here's your activity level, it is pinned right here. You know, 
five minutes a day of this, 20 reps of this is it, whatever. Everyone's threshold is different. You pin your threshold down, here's your activity level. As your activity stays consistent, it's staying consistent, I don't know why I'm singing, it's staying consistent, your pain will do this, yes, but you're being consistent because this stuff here is a lot, is controlled by way more things than what your activity level is doing. If this is mental, this is anxiety, fear, stress, worry, panic, all these different things that are causing your pain to do this, your activity level needs to be consistent across the board. That's the only way as things are ebbing and flowing and you're going straight, the, that's the only way of knowing if what you're doing is good for you. Now, if you have no idea if what you're doing is good for you, again, jump on that waiting list for Open Enrollments for Relief Academy. It, it solves all that problem for you. It solves that problem for you. But for now, understand your threshold. Stick to your threshold. Be, be sold out to your threshold. So as those good days and bad days come, you can be consistent. And then what you're gonna notice is those bad days and good days aren't gonna necessarily be so extreme. They'll be in more control. You'll be recovering faster. You'll have awesome weeks and a, and a setback. And you'll come back up, you'll have three more awesome days or two or three more months of awesome, of pain-free time. And then it'll drop because something happens. It doesn't matter. As you're consistent, you can adjust and challenge yourself, challenge your fears over time, and you can track it. You know what's going on, okay? So that's it. Those are the three biggest heavy hitter reasons. If your low back pain is not going away, I would address those three things first. Before you do some stupid stretch, before you do bust out, blow the dust off your rehab sheets that your PT gave you seven years ago, before you go down that road, Try this stuff out first. Address those three things. Again, if you want to see how I break down exercise and use exercise and coach exercise and show low back pain people, post-surgery people, how to approach their recovery, their pain-freeness with exercise, check out fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash back pain workshop is linked in the description box below as well as all the other things I mentioned in this video. They'll be linked in the description box. So if you want to check them out, do it. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you on the next episode.